Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here, welcome back to another Blue Archive video. Alright, so let's talk about Nagisa or Toki. If you have to pick one, who should you pull for? So we're going to talk a little bit about this, give you guys my thoughts on it, and hopefully help you guys to make the better decision. So let's jump right into it. So here's the thing, Nagisa and Toki are both on the banner upcoming both are going to be limited as you can see unique pickup recruitment for Toki and also unique pickup recruitment for Nagisa now unique equals to limited meaning that if they're gone you probably have to wait one year before you are able to get them back again because they won't be added to the standard banner so there's no chance to get them later on in whatsoever banners uh, that you're going to pull later on to spook them whatsoever so always keep that in mind so if you look at our banner list right now, so this is how it is. We are right now somewhere here, Toki, Nagisa. And then later on, uh, if you look at the roadmap as well, if you are following everything according to the plan, so we should be having Koyuki right after. Now Koyuki, obviously, uh, she's decent, but I don't want to talk about her too much because I think most players should be saving for the next one, which is going to be New Year Kayoko. Because you can see it's quite close all right so after talking nagisa you get one koyuki banner which will happen at the same time as shiroko and then new year kayoko is going to be here she is going to be a very very decent pickup now granted she is not limited so there's that however keep in mind that she's going to be very very strong uh, as a character overall if you're looking to help out your mystic team so with that being said uh let's just focus on toki and nagisa in this particular video let's give you guys an overall perspective of both of them so Toki, if you guys are not aware, she will later have a bunny version. She is a very unique class. As you can see right here, her damage type is explosive, but her armor type is elastic. Now this gives her a very unique characteristic overall. So right now she's the first character as far as I know in the game to have an armor type of elastic. So this means that if you're trying to tackle certain like insane rates that the boss will have a different damage, you don't have to worry about them too much because most boss, as far as I know currently, right now, uh, will either be doing explosive damage, piercing damage, or mystic damage. So since your armor type is going to be elastic, you don't have to worry about uh, the boss doing a bonus damage to you as much. So that's one less thing to worry about. So let's look ahead her skills and try to understand her a little bit because she is apparently a more flexible character, but you can see her EX skill is two costs. However, it's a little bit tricky. You can use this switch to Abby Ashu mood where she will increase her attack, accuracy, and evasion. So after that, she will mood change when using EX skill, five cost to fire three shots, first and second attack to do bonus damage to the enemies within straight line. And the final attack is going to do a lot of damage to the targeted enemy and 230% to other enemies within a straight line. So all of these attacks ignore up to 60% of enemy's defense. So overall, a very cool character with a very unique concept. So since she is a character that switches between two different modes, you're probably going to need about seven cost to basically get her to ramp up overall. So she's kind of expensive in that aspect. She is good in raids. All right, she's going to be an good overall all-rounder but if you're looking to just tackle like the easier contents i don't recommend you to get her for that right so you're still better off using your regular characters in that sense so her normal skill every 35 seconds she's going to do 778 percent damage to a single enemy and you can see in abby ashu mood this attack is going to ignore 60 percent of enemy's defense again a lot of ignore defense right here which is always appreciated passive skill increase her own attack and the last one you can see when using EX skill in this particular mode, deals additional damage depending on the number of users. So first EX skill does more damage, second EX skill does even more, third EX skill up to 76%. Alright, and all of these attack ignore enemy's defense. So overall, as an explosive type, she's going to be pretty decent uh, if you're looking for a very versatile character that probably can help you in a few other game modes. Does she shine? in particular in any specific rates right now? Probably not. All right, she's much more of an all-rounder, uh, which can be good if you're starting out the game right now. I think Toki probably is going to be the better character to go for, actually. However, let's talk a little bit about Nagisa then. Nagisa, 
is going to be a little bit more complicated so she is again trinity as you can see explosive time on the damage armor class is heavy so nagisa is no longer a striker she's a support unlike toki and she is a bit different so if you're not familiar with nagisa think of her as a glorified hibiki in a way so let's talk a little bit about hibiki so if you guys are not aware hibiki until today is still one of the most recommended character for a lot of new players to pick up now the reason why is hibiki does a lot of damage she's a special type uh, this is a very huge aoe four cost big aoe that means this will get you through in story modes and a lot of other game modes that requires you to deal with multiple small enemies that's not like a, a raids or pvp whatsoever even pvp hibiki is really really strong so there's that nagisa apparently is supposedly an upgraded hibiki slightly in a way so let's talk a little bit about what she can do so right here you can see she does damage up to 772 percent damage to enemies within the circular area and then you can see if the enemy has light armor decrease defense by 40 percent before attacking for 15 seconds so she has defense debuff so unlike toki toki basically ignores enemies defense which is cool that means it's going to work on her attack however nagisa applies a debuff if the condition is met and this is going to help your team overall do more damage all right again normal skill she will be able to heal somebody with you know a couple of uh, percentage of healing if the heal target is a trinity student uh, it will be healed by even more so she heals trinity student even more than usual and then increase her own attack on the passive skill and sub skill increase critical damage of explosive type damage allies up to 24.2 percent now this is where uh, the difference probably comes in much more significant between her and Hibiki. So Hibiki's sub skill increased allies damage by 17.3%. However, it works for everyone. Now when it comes to Nagisa, it increases 24%. However, it only works for explosive damage time. So you can see somewhat the similarity there again. So uh, in a lot of situation later on, you can see why Nagisa can sort of be a better hibiki or power creep hibiki now if you have hibiki right now all right if you just started hibiki is going to be a very very strong character going to be a very solid unit overall however later on you will find this particular boss called the gregorius uh, this boss has yet to come to global server now let's show you guys uh, how this boss works overall okay so you can see you need a lot of explosive type character this boss apparently holds the record in JP server for the boss with the highest HP currently in the game. So Nagisa apparently shines in this mood. So you can see uh, a couple of characters here are going to be very, very crucial. All right, so you can see uh, that is Nagisa right there. Three cost and she's able to do AOE. Uh, she's pretty much like best in slot for this particular boss. Now let's understand a little bit, okay, why you need Nagisa but not Hibiki, right? Very important thing to know is Hibiki doesn't have any decreased defense whatsoever. Nagisa has a decreased defense, which you need for this boss. This boss has a mechanic. You can see right here, uh, depending on how much debuffs the boss has, you will be able to do certain things. So if the boss have up to 4 to 5 debuffs, you can increase incoming damage by 200%. Otherwise, if you don't do anything to the boss, let's say there's no uh debuff whatsoever the boss will increase his own attack by 40 percent which is going to be very hard to deal with so you want debuffs on the boss which is why nagisa is going to be the best in slot for a lot of people later on now again this is going to be a much more complicated uh, discussion right i know not everyone has played blue archive since the beginning of time all right if you are a long time blue archive player you've been playing for a couple of years all right since its release understandably you will want Nagisa, so you, yeah, you can tackle the Gregorius boss once he comes to global server. However, if you are a new player, Nagisa probably is not going to be that important. Yes, Gregorius is, uh, she's going to be, she's going to shine right there, right? But like I mentioned, if you are a new player, you're going to lag in a lot of things. So I do think that Toki is going to be a better pick overall. All right, if you are like somewhat a new to like a mid-term player, but if you're a long-term player, you've been playing since day one, and your goal is to try to tackle every single raid boss to do insane difficulty, get to the top rankings, Nagisa is going to be a slightly better pick than Toki. The thing with Toki is, she doesn't shine 
in any bosses in particular. However, she is going to be super flexible. All right, you can use her in a lot of explosive bosses. Uh, you want to use her in Chitin bosses, even here in Numus. She can do decent. All right, she's not going to be amazing, but she's going to be decent. Nagisa is going to be amazing in Gregorius boss, but I can see in certain situations, a uh, Hibiki can still sort of do what she can do if you have a built Hibiki already. So both characters are going to be kind of good in their own sense. So you gotta think carefully which one you're gonna need more. So do you need a damage dealer special type? Or do you need much more of a damage dealer that is a, you know, striker type? So I think that depends on you. Obviously, you gotta look at your account and ask yourself a couple of things, right? So if you want to tackle Gregorius boss later on, especially the insane difficulty if you're just looking to tackle the lower difficulty you should be fine but insane difficulty you know you are most likely going to need a nagisa however if you really want to you should also look and pay attention to like i mentioned the next character which i want to mention kayoko new year which is extremely close so let's briefly talk about her because i think uh she's going to be the discussion of the next so-called meta character that you gotta have that's not limited, alright? So, I do think pulling for her is not going to be that bad of an idea. However, she's not limited. If you are like a free-to-play, you only want limited characters, I can see the perspective as well. So, she's a mystic special type, okay? So, she is going to shine as a mystic buffer. So, if you lack like a mystic buffer like Bunny Akane or a few others, she can shine right there so you can see. She adds up to 92% of Mystic Damage Bonus against the enemies weak to it. And she grants them status, Omamori. And this particular thing, when deal 200 critical hits, it will increase attack by 13.1% up to 24%. Alright, For allies with Omamori, she will add 41% to the Mystic Damage Bonus against enemies weak to it. So afterwards, it will clear Omamori from allies. So this is going to be a very very good skill, uh, increased crit rate as well and also increase her attack. She's a very good damage buffer, all right? Two costs, it's really hard to replace her. She's probably going to be the better ones. If you are struggling uh, in a lot of mystic bosses, Peror, Zilla, or even any of the other uh, so-called Shirokuro or whatsoever, I can see she shines a lot right there, right? Uh, and later on, once a new difficulty comes, this is something that we gotta look forward to. All right, so our next Insane difficulty boss right here, as you can see, shall be Hieronymus. Alright, so apparently Hieronymus new total assault difficulty is mentioned right here in the roadmap. So that's going to happen tomorrow. So really, really excited for that. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys ready? Are you guys prepared for Toki or Nagisa? I will try my best to pull for both. Hopefully, uh, the best strategy for me is... I want to pull in one banner, hopefully get Toki, and then I will use the spark for Nagisa since they share the same PT. So hopefully I'll be able to get Toki without PTing and then continue, go all the way in, use that for Nagisa. Uh, hopefully I'll get both. So that's going to be my plan. All right, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. Give this video a like. I will see you guys tomorrow in the pools. Have a nice day. Goodbye.